Welcome to How They Got Hacked, episode four. Welcome four. Four. Wow, like a whole month of this. Whole month of this. Tom Lawrence. Month. Xavier D. Johnson. Maurice Nash. All right. So yeah, a whole month of this. That's uh, We're figuring it out. We were actually discussing, you know, there's so much that goes on before the show. If it wasn't between a lot of swearing and a lot of uh, things maybe we can't talk about publicly, we should record it and have that show before the show. We've talked about that with uh, my other podcasts I do because the same thing happens. Like sometimes there's like an hour of, did you see this or did you see this? And we end up like with one set of show notes and then we spun off into a whole other direction. And just before uh, the first, well, first thing we'll do is I'm going to talk about a couple corrections. I was wrong. You were right. Whoever... The, go clap right now. Clap you. for you. You, someone on the other side of that camera. Um, I said steel, and it was an aluminum company, and there was a couple details. But details matter. They do. They matter a lot. I skimmed the article because it was really you know a hot topic, and I wanted to talk about it. But, yeah, the, they, the company did get hacked, did get crypto, Locker, Locker Go-Go did get them. Um, the other parts were true. I left links to all the articles, and even someone pointed out the article you linked to has the correct information. I say, I know I skimmed it wrong, but <laughs> I'll admit it. I did, but that's why I always leave all my sources. I'm not just spitting ideas off my head. Um, so there. But the other thing I want to jump into is someone emailed me and asked me if I could get them information on the accounting firm, and I cannot. And it, the reality is it's not – there's not anywhere that this is published. There's not anyone – it's not like these companies that get hacked uh, go and reach out to the news going, hey, you want to do a story on how we got hacked? They're not going to. Matter of fact, they want no – not they want to forget about the incident. They didn't want to have to tell their clients what they did. They followed uh, – compliance they did all the things you're supposed to do but you're not going to find a public write-up on these things and it's kind of this some of the stories i want to bring out and bring the light is that it's kind of raised awareness because too many think too many people think i'm just trying to scare them going oh you want to sell me cybersecurity? like no these companies get hacked they don't get in the news where where would someone publish this information only when these companies get sued would you even find any public information and the only time they get sued is when they don't comply uh, and get caught which is not easy. And then it's buried in there. And I commented last time that some of the people I know when they post in my forums, like Skip Olivia, they post some of the legal briefings about when the companies did things wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, he actually posted one, I think it's about the emails. Um, I don't know if either you read it, uh, but it was uh, a company tried destroying emails and got sued and things like that. But once again, <laughs> you wouldn't know until there's a lawsuit. But by the time the lawsuit happened, the event that triggered it was three years prior. So it's so mm-hmm. far out of the news when this stuff gets settled. Everyone's long since forgot, you know, because we, we have about a 15-minute attention span and we're raged about something new every five minutes. So, right. The um, sad part is there is something new every five minutes that yeah. enrages us. Ooh. Yeah. So they started to follow up with the prosecutions and things like that. Second, I will um, – speaking of that, I will briefly – something that popped in my head, um, and I didn't really share with these guys about it, but, you know, talking about these companies that get hacked, I found an answer – to something I didn't know about a company that got hacked. We got called in, and I got to talk to the technician on site that actually took care of it. So I got called by a company, and I didn't want to pay what it was going to cost to have their 80 systems, 80 computer systems unlocked from CryptoLocker, mm. no backups, no nothing, nothing set up properly. They had RAID arrays because RAID arrays are backups, right? But when you encrypt it, it's it's well redundantly encrypt now. <laughs> so, uh, But my advice to them was to pay the ransom, because I gave them a price on basically nuke and pave, start over their whole network, as that was my suggestion. They thought that was unreasonable. I said the, le- the next option would be pay the ransom. They said, that's we don't pay terrorists, da 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 And I'm like, okay, good. That's what the FBI is going to tell you to do. Yeah. They said, you if you don't have backups, pay the ransom. And uh, so they ended up, I found out that the other company that got the bid, they called someone else that they knew, and uh, the guy put... A lot of billable hours. They paid the ransom, and it still cost them a lot of money, not just for the ransom, but to the billable hours to run around putting a key in mm. on everything. Exactly. <laughs> unlocking it. So, unfortunately, it was a really boring phishing email. Someone clicked on it. No s- segmented networks. The oh, is this same a local story. company? Oh, yeah, yeah. This is this is like they called me, wanted me to help them do all this. Oh, um, they... And it's funny because I crossed paths uh, at an event with the technician, and I was like, <laughs> When they paid the ransom, did they release the information? Yes, they did. Because a lot of times you pay the ransom and, and they just don't. steal. Oh, these guys are good. Run away. These guys are good. They were professionals. Um, the, the the people who did the ransoming and they unleashed it and they got their documents okay. back. Um, cool. So that was great. Well, that's and what good. if they still just had a beachhead sitting there, waiting to press the button to re-encrypt or backup or backup? That, my advice system. is 
to, once you get that data, back of the data up, back the documents up, cross your fingers that nothing was planted in there, and then set it aside, nuke and pave, put it back. That's yeah, I, they didn't do that. They're very they're they're low budget tech on technology. They're a big big company that a big, big company that does not want to spend money on security. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's how they got themselves in the situation in the first place, and they're ripe for that situation again. This is about a year and a half ago the event occurred, but I, it was so funny. I ran into the technician. I recognized him, and uh, we were talking about. It. I'm like, hey, I think you were the other one they called for. He goes, I was, and I'm the one that did it. I'm like, <laughs> oh, so we sat down, had a beer, and <laughs> nice. nice. Let's talk about how that story went. Once again, this company's big. If you're in Michigan, they somehow affect you as much as I can say. They're not my clients. I'm not I'm not going to say their name still, mm-hmm. but they're big enough that you would know. And uh, it happened, but there's nothing in the news about it, not even a blurb. So it, once again, there's not write-ups. There's not a lot of times I can point you to this. Um, that's why we want to share these stories is because that's the kind of stuff going on. If, if it does in the news, don't worry. We leave links. I'm never hiding my sources. Um, but this is just going on all the time. You only hear about it, like I said, it's Star Hotels. It's a big company because then it's – once you affect, you know, the quantity of people in here, you can't avoid the news. Right? It's usually to save face while they don't disclose this information. Yeah, they don't want to talk about it. And then it's just damaging their reputation. It is. It is. And then it's also letting people know that you guys probably weren't doing good cybersecurity, things like that. That kind of ends up uh, as the topic on there. Mm-hmm. But Or – they told their shareholders that they were doing good cybersecurity. Exactly. And they were getting assessments and uh, giving reports to customers and giving reports to shareholders that still didn't paint the whole picture. Exactly. And, you know, it's it's kind of a mess like that. And we go through PCI DSS compliance. Uh, hey, Willie, if you're out there, I know he's someone who I've referred to a few times. He's uh, a friend on the channel. Um, he's done a lot of this uh, PCI DSS, and it's like – it does, but it's all kind of tongue-in-cheek, I feel. Um, uh, so another friend, he fails his PCI compliance because he's got security cameras on his network. That fails your PCI compliance. The two things are not related mm. at all. But if you have a port open on your IP address, they think, oh, that's a security risk. Any port's open security address for PCI mm. it, without an SSL. It has to have a signed SSL. Okay. So if you open a port without a signed SSL, you're out of PCI compliance. But the camera system is a physically separate network than its credit card system. But that's the problem. That's when bureaucracy gets in and these audits are hard to do. And then they're also don't make any sense. It's because I will tell you, every major breach when it comes to this credit card stuff, they were all PCI compliant companies. <laughs> Star Wars was PCI compliant. Target was PCI compliant. Target was PCI compliant. compliant. Uh, Dave and Buster's was PCI compliant. Dave and Buster's PCI. Yeah. Yeah, there's so many, <laughs> so many of them. So that's why it's so hard for these companies. There's not an audit trail that, hence, you know, the laws and et cetera, et cetera. So we'll jump off this topic because okay. let's talk about poning and owning. Yes. Owning and owning a Tesla, maybe. Oh, man. Uh, Do I get to keep the Tesla if I own it? You get to keep the Tesla. Oh, boy. You literally get to own if you pwn. little incentive out there for you guys. Very much incentive out there. Uh, Not to mention the team that won it. Uh, We'll leave a link to this. Uh, But this is the Pwn the Home Vancouver 2019 wrapping up and rolling out. Rolling out with a Tesla. Uh, So every year they do the Pwn the Home competition. Now, there's a little bit of a controversialness of it because – um, this is where I like the model that Hacker One has better than what the Pwn Own. Pwn Own's been around for a while. Uh, is where people bring their favorite zero days that they've acquired and really worked hard to find, and then own different systems. Though, so they have to walk in only using whatever crafting tools they have, like a well-crafted website, and try to get someone to click on it and try to gain vulnerability. The, the scariness of it is if you know March 22nd is when they wrapped up the Pwn Own competition. If on March 23rd they find another zero day, that's 364 days where, one, they hope no one else finds it. Two, they hope it doesn't get patched or anything else before they get to find it. But that also means they're not out there disclosing it because the way the Pwn Own competition works, as they submit these, even though they show what they did, the homework behind the scenes is submitted to the vendor who's then putting up the prize money who gets to go patch it so uh, right after Pona own there's patches and everything <laughs> tesla vmware <laughs> everything else so it's pretty cool uh, how it works but that's where the hacker one model as soon as you get something on there they get to pull it back out and they submit it to the vendor so as soon as you figure out the zero day and you can prove it to hacker one you get paid yep but, yeah, getting uh, paid is always nice. Getting paid is always nice. I mean, but getting a Tesla is always, always better. Been, always nice. I like it. They they hacked the Tesla infotainment system. That was a... Uh, Ooh. Okay. Uh, I don't think I can talk about my no, experiences no, no, no. with infotainment. 
<laughs> yeah, but it's it's a uh, it's one of those edge cases that because uh, it's so integrated on there. But they did it. Yeah. So as far as as far as my my uh, knowledge goes, infotainment is at ring zero. Mm-hmm. Um, and some cars out there allegedly, um, there is a system in which the infotainment is the bridge. It is actually passing the signal along for the CAN bus. Mm-hmm. Um, because the CAN bus is a is a network, right? So, uh, it's it gets really interesting, especially if you can, like you were talking about earlier, craft a a, mani- a malicious website mm-hmm. that may be doing something like a heap spray or buffer overflow or something else to get control over memory, um, and execution of code flow, which is that's where all the good stuff lives. Yes. So. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of it's kind of interesting. They uh, were I think believe they browsed to a web page with the Tesla. That was the uh, Tesla hack on there. So clever. Um, Probably but, a WebKit bug. Yeah, WebKit bug. The real impressive one. Now this is the part that took me by surprise and to me stood out. So one, they were able to escape a virtual machine. So specifically VMware Player, mm-hmm. they were able to get a crafted web page to escape to the host operating system. Now, if you're familiar with how hosting environments work, they run as a series of virtual machines or Mm -hmm. sometimes Docker, so it's different types of virtualization. Mm -hmm. But obviously escaping, let's say I rent a a VM at a hosting company for my own use, but escaping out of that is supposed to be impossible, as we hope. But that's where the most prize money is uh, paid out. So we've talked about HackerOne. There's a shadier company out there called (laughs) Zerodium. (laughs) <laughs> Zerodium is not like Hacker One. Zerodium sells to uh, undisclosed clients these type of exploits. Regimes. Probably regimes. Def- okay, definitely regimes. <laughs> yeah, they sell to clients that would be considered a regime. A regime. <laughs> and uh, so, and, and they offer quite a bit of money. So, uh, a VM escape right now, I believe, is going for roughly a million dollars on Zerodium. And I'm impressed with the skill because here's the thing if you sell your. Uh, zero data Zerodium for an escape on VMware, you do not get to ever speak that you did it. You get your money, and then you get to shut up. So that's where Zerodium is messing up versus Pwn to Own. Pwn to Own on the other side is all about putting your name on lights, chief of the Pwn, everything else. They didn't take away a million dollars from that competition, and that one, just the one hack, I mean, don't get me wrong, Tesla's cool, but just that one hack, of that VMware probably would have fetched them way more money over on Zerodium. Right. But that's not the hacker way. These guys are true hackers as far as I'm concerned. They're not the oh. kinds. They're not trying to screw over people. They're not trying to sell it to a regime. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my thoughts on uh, that. It was It's impressive. I'll leave the write-up. They, there's a ton of other great teams out there that hacked a lot of things. Um, I don't have time to cover all of uh, them. But ethos, right? Keeping close to the hacker ethos and making yes. sure that, you know, you don't allow uh, the things that you're researching to be weaponized. Right. That's a part of our, that's a responsibility of it anyone is. who's looking for or turning over rocks and looking for bugs and software. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's one of those things. That's why we're sitting here. We're talking about it. We're sharing with links, tools, uh, how we did things, my tutorials on this channel outside of this. Mm-hmm. It's all about sharing knowledge. I like taking stuff apart. And I got, you know, you go to one of these hacker meetups and uh, shout out to those. I was not able to make it myself, but some people came out to DC313. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for the people that watch and came out to DC313. You are appreciated. Please come back. And uh, for those of you who haven't been out to DC313, please come out to DC313. We will enjoy you. Join us. Yeah. So the, and that's what you know. We're there just to sit around, talk tech, share knowledge, and things like that. That's uh, the the world I grew up in, and that's what got me more into tech when a bunch of people can share it. Mm-hmm. Um, so and now I'm taking that skills, you know, the video platform to share. It. And that's that. These guys are close to that hacker ethos because I of course the, the other side is I know they're itching to drop it of when of how they did it. Uh, <laughs> they have I forget how many days they have the patch. If it's I think the standard ninety day disclosure, mm-hmm. uh, they gave to VMware to come up with a patch before they can tell because it's one thing to win it, but then to say how they want it. That yeah. they get their name and lights again in a couple of weeks when they go, all right, the, now that they're patched, because they won't release the, uh, the source code to what they did until it's patched, and you know they're going to be dropping on GitHub. That's a whole new show, How to Pwn to Own. How they pwn to own. They pwn to own. <laughs> well, we're going to work on that, too. Uh, I'm going to, like I said, that's uh, I finished my big project. I said that all day in my vlog, so I'm, I know. <laughs> and so I'm going to be able to produce more uh, videos. I want to get back to it. Um, but I want to do a couple of those. Me and Xavier, I think me and him can tag team where I'll do like a walkthrough. 
Yeah. Uh, and we'll, I'll jump in that next. So this uh, Sequoia Cybersecurity Solutions, this write-up, a pen tester's guide, part one, OSNT passive recon and discovery of assets. This is legal stuff. These legal. are things that like you can do legally yes. and you will not get in any trouble for it. No one will come and knock on your door. Yep. This is passive. He's not actively trying passwords, not doing this. All reconnaissance to try to figure out what pieces of information you can gather. And this is just an excellent, I love this write-up. This is well-crafted. I'm looking forward to part two. Oh, he actually, he's got part two on here. He must have published it since I looked last time when I added this to show notes. Part two. LinkedIn, not just for jobs. So he takes you through that next step of what oh you do boy. with the information. Oh, boy. And this is... This is one of those walkthroughs of a combination of finding the websites, social engineering. How do we look up what domains they have? Um, you, you know what he doesn't mention in here, but uh, MX Toolbox has a really cool feature. I don't know if you knew about this. So you can go to MX Toolbox. You can put in someone's host, and they'll tell you who else is shared on all those IPs. Every other domain that they can find crawling the Internet shared on that same IP range. Oh that's a lot of information. So it's what they don't talk about that pivot in there. He does it differently because he does a bunch of domain name scraping with Google and reverse engineering because what you're looking for is all the subdomains. Right. You can guess a lot of them. Mail.thecompanyname.com, remote, RDP, gateway, VPN.thecompanyname.com, all the different DNS. It's funny. He's pulling all them up here, and it's sad because those are – Companies are not creative in that. We come DC up with. DC.company <laughs> name. Oh, I know. D, yeah. I wonder what their domain controller is. DC. DC dot. Dot. Yeah. And this is all stuff. It's like I said, it's all passive. He's doing a bunch of reverse DNS lookups. And it's sad because that is, you know, when we set stuff up, I try. Even though I know it's a little bit of security through its security, at least it's not mailed at the company. Dot, yeah. You know, dot the company. Dot com. How about this? I'm not anti security uh, through obscurity, hmm. right? I think that. Security through obscurity is another layer. Yeah. I am anti only having one layer, right? Right. So think about this the normal way, right? Throw in some some obscurity, throw in some you know routing, throw in some rules mm -hmm. on the firewall. Make sure that you have multiple layers into what the you know crown jewels are. Oh yeah, and just things like putting SSH on an odd port number. You know how much that just reduces your logs? Because mm -hmm. the script kitties are all day looking at default ports. Because don't worry. There's enough default parts open to keep people busy. Yeah. <laughs> so 22, and I will also try 2222. Two, two. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah. So put them at a little bit of an odd number. I'm also going to try 1039 because I don't know about you guys, but if you try and do like a release upgrade, they have to spin up that second SSH daemon on that nice weird oh. point of 1039. And I would love to attack your system while all of its defenses are down because it's upgrading. That sounds like fun to me. Yeah. There's those, you got to watch for all those, so uh, lock it all down. Mm -hmm. I can't believe people still use default, just default creds. <sighs> oh, man. All day, all Root day. tour. <laughs> That's my favorite. When I go into these hacking labs, right, like virtual hacking labs, mm -hmm. uh, the OSCP, uh, what's another one that we do? Hack the box. They all tell you not to do exactly what I'm telling you that I do. I know, I know. I'm going to get comments about this. But if you just take the second that it takes to run a scanner mm -hmm. and do add uh, a root and tor as the username and password, you will own so many noob hackers that is scary. It, yeah, it's uh, it's scary how many <laughs> the hackers get owned that way. Admin, exactly. admin. Man. Well, and they sell hacking kits now. So it's like if you if you think you want to get into it and you get some kid, he's got a few dollars and he doesn't want to take the time to actually learn. Oh, I'm gonna get into this real quick. He goes on, you know, wherever. I'm not gonna say wherever. You go buy the kit, and then they never even change the password for it. It's just. Oh. But at least they get pwned, and it just gets, you know, <laughs> it, it becomes an entertaining. There you go. <laughs> you just use up all of his licenses by activating uh, his crime kit everywhere. You know, we got <laughs> we got so distracted last time. You know what we didn't talk about was the hackbacks. Oh, um, yeah, hacking back. Hacking back. So is that illegal? And maybe this is... Oh, yeah, we didn't talk about the hackbacks. Yeah. So hacking back. This is that gray area. Super yeah. gray. Super gray. Let's say your company's under attack. You don't know who the attacker is. And this is all hypothetical, not that this occurred, or maybe anyone actually did this for their company to defend against it. But then you find out the script kitty, who's really annoying, also left it at perhaps the default admin and password. The minute you type the password in, you have now broke the law, and you're very traceable. They can technically, but of course it would come at the expense of revealing themselves, um, come after you for that. But 
maybe you're doing everyone a favor by deleting their command and control servers and everything else and stopping a problem uh, that's there. Where do you lie on that? This is where the morality of the gray hat, black hat, <laughs> guilty smiling guy next to me. <laughs> Why are you smiling, Mo? <laughs> <laughs> But uh, this is one of those things that you run into occasionally of uh, where do you land on this? There almost has to be, at some point, some type of rules established. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have similar equivalencies. If they're shooting at me, I can shoot back in the real world. <laughs> Stand your ground. I mean, I would think that should be a thing. I mean, you're yeah. getting hacked. You should be able to hack You can back. have a concealed weapons permit. You can have a concealed weapon. If you are shot at, you may shot shoot back. That's pretty clear. There's no similar equivalency right now in the hacking world. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is go. Trust me, it's happening. Oh, it's There's happening. not any laws around it. And trying to explain that to a judge. So you're broken a computer system? No, dude. The guy was trying to hack me. I went and typed admin, admin. And I said, delete, man. You you did what? What does this mean? What is it like? Right. Let's picture a judge. They're having enough time <laughs> sorting out non-technical things. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, this is, a, this is a sticky one. I always tell people, just for the record, I'm throwing this out there, you should not hack back. Um, right. Uh, let's just make sure that that's understood. I think that hacking back, although it is gratifying, um, you can find yourself in a situation that you can't get yourself out of. This is true. Um, you know, in the rare event that you're under attack by some uh, crime mob in St. Petersburg, how do you know that they don't have a local chapter? Right. <laughs> yeah, I know. They don't have a whole team that when you hack back, no, they're ready to hack back. Yeah, yeah and, what if they're not hacking back and they're just coming to your house and setting it on fire? Right. And you, you do what you can. Context, yeah. <laughs> We're going to extreme route here. But it, generally speaking, uh, you layer up your defenses, block the ranges that they're yes. coming from and things like that. You double down, lock down. That's the proper things to do. You can get DDoS protection. You can do whatever it is that they're doing against you. Um, the good news is at least you've identified where it's coming from and you pinpoint it. I have a block list that I've had to create where people that I showed them and I talked before how I do this when I see people poking at some of my servers I'm like they've just poked one time too many <laughs> yeah. and uh, then I just block them permanently done done Fine. so you know and, if, and it's funny if they ever call me is they make notes of why I blocked anyone on my firewall side um, I make notes of why they're blocked so if I ever get a call hey I can't get to something I don't know what's your IP address really that's fascinating <laughs> yeah, it looks like you were scanning me from all your IP cameras in, in 2018 oh, you were on January of 2018 you were the guy that I made a note about <laughs> In yeah. my journal here. That's interesting. <laughs> so yeah, hacking back is um, it's but it's we need to we need to deal with it at some point. I think there needs to be some laws addressed by it mm -hmm. because picture a companies that are much larger in scale or you know the size of Amazon. If Amazon pokes back at a nation state that pokes at them, <sighs> does that start off something big? Because Amazon's got enough data center power. And they're quasi-government entity. Uh, the Amazon government servers are the largest. They are the largest hoster of government. So is that a government attack? If Amazon DDoS Russia, That's is called that a cyber an, war. It's a cyber war, but who's responsible? Is that an American attack against them? What if the government leased servers? Who initiates it? Did Jeff Bezos, you know, press the, uh, <laughs> what was it, an on tool? The, the low, the oh, ion cannon. LOIC. The, oh. LOIC. Low orbit ion cannon. Yeah, what if uh, what if uh, Bezos has got one of those buttons? He's like, I don't turn the internet off today. This has to be addressed at some point. I mean, these are serious topics. Uh, we laughing about it, but you know, I want to know. Jeff Bezos got someone. Oh, those picks ain't coming out today. I'm gonna turn the internet off. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd imagine he has that button, but I don't think he uses it often. He he he's, he doesn't make money on the days the internet's off. Right. right. I don't get my Prime right. membership shipped to me. So. Right. <laughs> yeah. The uh, the 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 ethics around hacking back, I think, is more so where we're at in our discussion, right? And I think it's less legalities, right? When there's when there there are no legislation around a certain thing or a certain topic, mm -hmm. it all comes down to ethics. Like, how do you feel? about hacking back, right? Me personally, I find it to be, uh, I mean, beyond gratifying and rewarding <laughs> because you're getting back at someone who's probably caused so much damage. Mm -hmm. I find it to be putting a target on your back, right? Yeah. Because you, you are now perpetrating the exact act that you're trying to defend against. Right. Yeah. So as, a, as a hacker, you don't want to be attacking random systems. So think about it from a hacker's perspective. If I'm a black hat, I'm going to attack you, but not from my laptop. 
I'm sorry. I'm going to attack you from some IP cams, some routers that I've, you know, uh, put you're in my pocket. You're going to pivot off of other networks to make it really hard to find so you. So now you're hacking back based on what? Those IP addresses? Right. Now you may be just attacking right. the daycare. Right. So, like... It, it's, it gets you in a gray area real quick. It's not the best way to do it. Um, call you the FBI. Yeah. Because they can do things like that. Because then they can get permission. Because this is, you know, Krebs has done uh, some good write-ups on this of how they do that reverse investigator. And this requires cooperation with authorities um because he had someone attacking him they got to the point of shipping drugs to him it's one of the most incredible stories he's got written up and they thought they're going to bust him what he didn't know is by the time they tried to bust him with drugs he'd already got their email passwords mm -hmm. and he's already working with authorities and like these guys are after me so that was what got them caught was the shipping of stuff to him to try to wow. uh, get him caught get him wow. caught revealed their real name because wow. the email didn't reveal the real name but he had some of the inside but he completely this was cooperating with the authorities to make all this happen mm -hmm. and that's an important aspect of it because they can stop by that daycare that that ip address is registered to have you guys never watched the movie <laughs> hackers <laughs> like this happened right the dude was like man we got breached he got the the you know computer fraud and abuse act uh, black dude to involved kick in everyone's to kick door. in everyone's door everyone's and he door. was the one that was doing the hacking <laughs> So this is a, a terribly careful. good movie from forever ago. Now I want to watch it again. And Angelina Jolie <laughs> is beautiful in that movie. She is. She is. Oh man, bring me back to. I've been. I got. I don't know. It's been a while since I watched, it, but I need to watch it again. You mess with the best, you die like the rest. Die like yes. the rest. Zero and it had cool. Penn Jillette in there. He's also a hero. Mike. Oh yeah. Yep. So, anyways, <laughs> enough of that. Next thing, let's talk about Asus. Oh, my God. Did a video on it, diving in a little, um, oh. talking about some of the implications. And we're all very fascinated by this because yeah. this is a supply chain attack. And I want to do soon another video um, related to it. One, I hope for a debrief because we all don't know what happened. Everyone's being quiet about it. The other reason I'm bringing it up is because we now know what the 600 MAC addresses are. We don't know who they are. We know what they are. Oh and uh, another security team decided to reverse engineer the uh, binary download that was provided by Kaspersky to determine whether or not your computer contained it. They would do a hash to determine, but they would not reveal what those 600, hard, they, 600 were. They would just give you a yes or no if your computer was on said list of 600 MAC addresses. So someone else reverse engineered that, which they walk through the write-up and it's beautiful code. Um, they talk of, of every step of the way. I'll leave a link in the show notes because it's very, very detailed of how they used every piece to reverse engineer the uh hash and reverse engineer the uh, salted hash it mm -hmm. turns out so they cracked the sal salted hash but they did so because they had one mac address to start with to identify where it was in a compiled binary and reversed it back out wow. so they showed off their skills being able to reverse engineer it so wow. i was impressed and because Persky didn't just Kaspersky. drop them in there they hashed them in there yeah. so it was uh, equal. Plus, there's some head starts if you're not familiar how MAC address works. Uh, the first few octets of every MAC address is denoted to the manufacturer. So, my Lenovo, the same octet is actually going to be on that one over there because IBM, Lenovo, same thing. Uh, so, they had a little bit. So, it's not like they had to do this, even though it's a strong hash, it's low entropy because there's not that many options. There's a lot, but not as many. It's half, uh, half as many, right? Yeah, half as many. <laughs> we will. So, uh, that's a fascinating write up, but the, the attack. In, we just don't know how it happened or how they acquired these 600, but somehow there are 600 computers that they're looking for that this tool activates on. Only 600. I mean, Asus sells millions of computers, but only 600 of them. How'd they get the list? This is where someone like, right, like social engineering? Yeah. Like, did they tip off a salesperson? I got 600 laptops destined for Washington, D.C. Mm. They're, they're headed towards, or a bank. These 600 laptops yes. are headed to the C-suite of this bank. We know who ordered it. We know where they're destined. Generally, we know there's six. We know one of these six hundred is going to the CEO of the company, the mm -hmm. CFO of the company. One of those people are getting it. That is targeted. That is razor sharp. That's f poking a pin at it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is. I'm really impressed. That is impressive. That is. That's yeah. advanced persistent. And well, they have the advanced persistent threat. It's on ASUS. So they. How long were they in ASUS? Seems to be a fuzzy question. They found this on uh, for going back to I think it was September. It's quite a while. Don't uh, don't very correct me on it. I will leave a link in there. And I did it. I did get the date right in my uh, first my video. I did dedicated to this. But picture this: they had it sitting there for a long time. 
And then they knew these 600. So they've already got Asus. They've got something inside their company. They're able to push to all that live update. And it's a driver update. So this runs at the system level, which means it can bypass whatever. And it's signed by Asus's security cert. So it's passable. It's a driver. Ooh. It can install things. Its job I is to ring reach out. Ring zero. Ring zero. Its job is to reach out to the internet and install things like drivers at the lowest system level to get things done because you need a driver update to keep you safe. But this tool, which is a trusted tool, was waiting for a MAC address. When it found it, then it downloaded a payload. So it's actually, the Kaspersky's write-up was interesting how they even figured it out because they did not have one of the 600 laptops where that would have keyed it off. But it's just impressive and targeted. And it is the, it has to be a nation state behind it. The, the level of engineering it takes to pull this off is not arbitrary. But then again, we've, we've seen things we thought were nation state that it turned out to be, you know, geo hot. Just so, <laughs> or, or like, uh, what did Trump say? A 400 pound hacker. 400 pound hacker. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this person's really good, but the, the weirdness of the targeting doesn't make me think you're standard hacker. They don't do oh, things no. like target 600. Uh, computers. That's not a. They would have just hit all of them. They hit all of them to get their name and lights. I hacked this. I hacked Asus. I got it on a million computers. Whatever your name and lights. Uh, you know your hacker name and lights per se, not your name and lights, because if <laughs> your names and lights are some red and blue lights coming after you, sure. you don't want your name in there. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but the uh, so it's really interesting. Um, I'm hoping you know we can keep up on the story as it develops, and hopefully some information gets dropped on here. I really want to know who the 600 R is. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's crazy. So that's, speaking of trusted tools, uh, you want to talk about the Office Max incident? Oh, it's not really uh, hacking, but it's, 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 a, deception. it's deception, deception and scamming for sure. It's when deception. the companies you think are protecting you, this is why you should never go to Office Max. <laughs> <laughs> and this is great. I actually uh, Maurice brought this up and told me, and I'm going to brought. I, I did a story on the uh, Office the Office Max and the fact that their tool doesn't do anything but lie. It was an investigative report. It was tipped off of, uh, I think, by one of their uh, staff members inside and said, yeah, this tool, it lies. You pop it in, it says there's these problems with your computer, and we claim to secure it. And uh, it doesn't. A PC checkup. Yeah, it's a That's PC a checkup. PC checkup that yeah. is given to you from the company you bought the computer from. <sighs> good old Mac. Yep, good old Mac. And then explain what happens after that. So you run the PC checkup. It tells you you have all these problems and you have to come to us and pay all this money to get them fixed. Yeah. Woo. Yep. All to, this money. To the tune of $30 million. $30 million. Oh, yeah. They have a $30 million fine. $30 yep. million dollar fine. Yep. The FTC has sided against them and has uh, charged them $30 million. Yeah. This is one of the things I hate. There, it's it's this false sense of security. You just lied to consumers, and the way they busted them, uh, and I demonstrated in my video. The way they busted them was uh, some inside people took a laptop, took it to Office Max, had them do the PC check or cleanup, right? Certified it clean. They went to the three more Office Maxes, and each one of them kept finding the same problems over again and charging mm. them the same thing again. <laughs> wow! <laughs> like literally, here's your receipt from the Office Max for an hour ago, type thing, and. Here I'm at the next one, and oh no, you have this problem, this problem. Let me sell you this. Let me sell you this. Like no, I don't. I mean that's that's pretty deceptive. It's I mean, just deceptive. They. I don't and, think a fine is enough. No. Oh. I don't think a fine is enough. Oh, well, because you're really dealing with people's personal information. Would you like them to be tarred and feathered, Mo? <laughs> Flogged. <laughs> ten <laughs> lashes. Flog. Ten lashes. We'll go with those. Flog, flogging of all the executives responsible for oh, this. Oh man. So it's safe to say that we're never going to get an <laughs> ad. For, or, if you see an Office Depot or Office Max it ad, it feels that's unlikely. Ironic. <laughs> it would be ironic if it shows up on here because they're talking about Office Max, Office Supplies. Hopefully, it's keywording on this. I'd love to see their ad on there. Because I know none of you are going to buy from it. Hopefully it's the ad of them getting <laughs> flogged. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a little side note. We were talking about that. I thought that was uh, that was interesting. I mean, it's back to false sense of security. They lure people in. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, um, when it comes to PC computers, I, I did a video with this. No. When it comes to uh, businesses, I say yes. But PC computers, like your home computer, just use Windows Defender, things like that. Don't buy a bunch of crappy stuff. It doesn't work for crap. And these companies all want to sell you something, upsell, upsell, upsell um, for your home PC stuff. Yes. I, 
I don't find it. I tell even some people we've got like their banking. Uh, we have some clients, you know, just get a Chromebook separate. You just put everything on a, put your, that on a Chromebook separate because nothing can be loaded on it. It's locked down. You're not, you know, don't mess with it. Don't side load it. And then use your other PC for this. I mean, there's a lot of security you got to go through. Um, and with the business stuff, the only reason I recommend even the tools we use for business is because we actively monitor and watch everything they're doing, making sure they're up to date mm -hmm. and everything else. So we're, you know, on it for our clients. If you're not on it, just use Windows Defender. Yeah. It's just as, uh, just as good. Or you could just not use Windows. Or you could just not use Windows and use Linux. <laughs> and I am doing a video soon on that particular topic because uh, a lot of people ask about using Linux. Is it more secure? There's the answer is not as definitive as you might think. But the trust chain model, because if you're if you're worried about the ASUS hack but you're running Linux, I'm you're, not worried because right. Lenovo. And Komodo had a little incident a while ago where they were putting crap and stuff on the computers. And uh, I'm not people like, oh, you use Lenovo. They were caught doing that. I'm like, yeah, but I run Linux, so it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And because the, the chain of trust is what's important. So I'm going to do a video centered around how trust chains work and how signing certificates work and how that makes Linux very different from Windows for how you run things and how there's less risk in the risk mitigation. And it's not Windows' fault. It's your fault for not using Windows, but the way windows works the way windows use so the way you're loading software on it mm -hmm. is the problem and windows came out with a solution called windows s but then you can't run the programs you want so you're back to the square one of untrusted programs i'm not going to spiral off into the details because it's going to be safe for a separate video yeah, to talk about that go. but chains of trust are what keeps that in order that's how these businesses that do lock things down that aren't in the news chains of trust sign certificates signing their own certificates for software that's the that's the way to do it there you go. And Linux does it that way. So <laughs> Lay down the law. Bam. And the last thing we're going to talk about is I brought up GeoHot. Has he lost his mind yet? Uh, he's working on it. Working on it? He's geo-warm right now. Geo-warm. <laughs> <laughs> he's a genius. Hands down. Oh, bow hands down, down to the level of uh, sophistication. Mm -hmm. If you don't know him, look him up. I love GeoHot. Yeah, self-driving cars and everything else. But this video popped up. I couldn't help it because he's engaging. If he's if he he's had an hour talk, he did. Yeah, he's I'm like, giving a talk about um, <laughs> life is a simulation. Life is a simulation. Oh, oh, other people have touched on that, but he just kind of he spent a lot of time <laughs> thinking about it. A lot. It's not a drug induced rant or no, anything no, like that. No. Not at all. Are we sure? Positive. I'm positive. positive. I and I actually I liked his answer when someone asked about, do you do drugs to figure out if you're simulation? He goes, no, that just messes with your head. It doesn't mess with simulation. And <laughs> and he said he does comment though. It might t it might cost some more CPU time though. <laughs> he goes, you're gonna run up someone's hosting bill. <laughs> Wow. Oh, it's it's actually a fun talk. I don't think he's completely crazy. I I enjoyed so if you it. You watched The Matrix. You watched The Matrix. I think he's watched it too a few times. <laughs> he's watched it a few too many times. What happens when you're so good at hacking? When you're geo hot? When you can just, dude, the guy's a, a pure genius. All his hacks are he's brilliant. He's got to give me the zero day for the simulation hack then. Well, and he's got to escape the simulation. That's what he talks about. Is how to escape. That yeah. he dives into that's it from his hacker is. mentality. Okay, I gotta watch it. You have to watch it. I gotta, I gotta watch, watch it. it. I'll leave a link so you guys can watch it too. It's actually one of those. It's real like meta and things like that, but it's so kind of fun to watch. Thought provoking. It's, yes, his his take on it. And we'll 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 give you an idea, a little teaser here. Is uh, does Mario know he's in a simulation? Which is where the gods of Mario when we're playing. Does exactly. Mar is Mario aware? And this is when they insert the Elon Musk smoking pot with the eyebrow look. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Are we in a simulation? I mean, it's it's really interesting, and he he breaks down a lot of interesting concepts, a lot of thought provoking stuff in there. It's fun. But I did start watching it. My first, you have to go through at least the first ten minutes before you realize, okay, he, he's still rational. Yeah. He's still having rational thoughts. <laughs> Shout out to Geo Hot. Yeah. Geo Hot, if you're watching, we love you. I'm sure he's not watching. <laughs> <laughs> if you watch this one day, you if you're watching this simulation, you. we watched yours. <laughs> 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 so, I think that's about it. We're gonna wrap up. Uh, anything else to add? Um, no, I have nothing special to add. Thank you for all of the fans. Thank you to um, everyone who came out to DC three one three. Yes, and to the other numerous fans that I've met that are watching the show that haven't been to DC three one three, please come by to DC three one three. And uh, yeah. That's it should, for we, me. should we give a shout out to the Facebook fan you have that's uh, going hard in the paint on your Facebook account? <laughs> no. <laughs> All I can say is, is it's hard for me to log into my Facebook, so have fun, bro. Yeah. 2FA, man. Like fucking multi, multi, multi <laughs> FA. Like it's, it's intense. MFA all day. Yeah, MFA all day. 
Go to M's up. All right, man. <laughs> Later. All right. Until next time. Until next time.